Hi everyone! Tom was here and welcome back to the, uh, well, the second installment of Tom was here at the movies where we review, discuss, spoil uh, new movies that are in theaters as well as movies that are out now new streaming. And uh, this episode pertains to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Not to be confused with the 1974 Texas Chainsaw Massacre or the 2003 reboot of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. No, this is the 2022 Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and we're going to talk about it on Tom Was Here at the Movies. Okay, let's get into the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and first, before we get into anything, let's blame Halloween. Not the original Halloween, the reboot Halloween, or the... the, the the reboot sequel to Halloween that came out a few years ago. Uh, it's ruined all movie titles till the end of time. Halloween introduced into the world that you can make a sequel and call it the same title as the original movie. So Halloween was a direct sequel of the original Halloween. But it's not Halloween 2 because I would assume they, you know, people go, I can't see Halloween 2 because they didn't see Halloween 1, and so they just call it Halloween. And as you can see, these other movie studios are doing the same thing. I have no problem if you're rebooting a movie and calling it the same title. Like, if you know, a few years ago they rebooted Friday the 13th, they called it Friday the 13th. Okay, that's fine. But now, and this has happened more and more, it happened with Scream, and now it's happening here, you're making a direct sequel to those movies and you're calling it the same title. That's stupid. <laughs> it's really stupid. Uh, so the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a direct sequel to the original 1974 Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So it's Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. But not really, because there's been 900 Texas Chainsaw Massacres. Um, so... Obviously, they're, they're, they're doing the same thing that Halloween did, where they're kind of removing uh, all the other sequels from the, you know, trying to make it a new thing. Here's the problem with that, with Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, well, for one, I thought foolishly that this was going to be a limited series. Similar to... I mean, similar to the Halloween theme where, uh, and it mentions in the trailer, that the original final girl from Texas Chainsaw Massacre has been living her whole life, you know, to kind of like come back and kill Leatherface. Uh, sound familiar? It is. It's it's the plot to the, the reboot of Halloween. It's, it's almost identical. Um, and I thought it was going to be, you know, him doing stuff her tracking her down, they meet, there's a confrontation, and it's stretched out over six episodes or something like that. Because I really equate, I still don't equate Netflix to movies, I equate it more to series, um, and so I, re I really thought it was just a limited series. No, what you're getting is an 83 minute long movie. That's with credits. Uh, meaning you probably get about a little over an hour's worth of movie uh and in that uh you're not really getting any character development if somebody put a like if somebody was like tell me gun to your head i need to know name one kid you watched this movie last night name one character name in this movie i, I can't tell you leatherface i win yes yes i win um no uh I couldn't tell you what any of those characters' names were, what their, you know. I mean, I get that there's not a lot of character development in these movies. They're basically lambs to a slaughter. They're there to come in and be instantly killed. And when you have a runtime that's basically 80 minutes long, uh, that is that was their purpose, basically, is what occurred. Um, the The loose, very loose plot of this is that I guess a celebrity chef and his business partner or something or I mean they're like I guess like Instagram famous I don't I I are 
they're buying up a ghost town to make like a I don't know if it's like a tourist destination or a um I, I don't really know the purpose of what they're actually trying to do but um they're bringing in investors to buy in this little Texas town in the middle of nowhere and so beyond that that's really the arc they're given uh, you find out that two of the characters are sisters. You find out that uh, through a very brief, like, five-second flashback that the younger sister of the one character was involved in some sort of nightclub or school shooting or something like that. Um, that's that's the max of the plot development. Beyond that, it's like, okay, two of these characters are getting married. Uh, that's about it. That's really about it. Uh, you don't get anything fleshed out beyond that. And then, so they come to the town, and the, I guess they're bringing in these YouTube influencers and investors and, and these Instagram famous people to, I guess, buy up places in this town to start like a, I don't even know what it is. It's like a tourist town or a, um, like I don't really know what the purpose of it is, but it's really dumb. Uh, <laughs> In the turn of the century, there was a bold idea uh, to make a town in the middle of the desert. And, you know, that became Las Vegas. You can do that sort of thing in the 1900s. Where you can just be like, oh, just throw a casino here and hope people will stop by. And then another casino opens up, another casino opens up, and suddenly it becomes a thing. It's significantly harder to do that in 2022. Even with these people that are like influencers or, you know, whatever, celebrities and things. Like if a celebrity that you like told you like, hey, I'm buying up this small town, come to, you know, the middle of nowhere, Texas, and, you know, buy like a storefront to be in a small town. I'm sure some people would do it, but like, would that fly? No, no, that's, it, it's, it's really stupid. Um, but the other thing is, for a ghost town, it's pretty well preserved, at least on the outside. Uh, the, uh, the the town looks pretty good. Like uh, there's really the, the storefronts and the you know the ideas conveyed is that people have been in a long time ago. And beyond that, it looks pretty good. I mean, it's pretty well preserved. Um, but they didn't really have any sort of. Um, you know, it's kind of loose threads that were put together to form a plot. I always look at it as like, it's a bunch of writers sitting in a room and they're coming up with ideas. And it's like, how are we going to get the, uh, these people to this town? Oh, we'll, we'll say they're, you know, we'll make it, you know, trendy. We'll say they're YouTube influencers or celebrities or whatever. And they're trying to build this town out of nothing or whatever. But it's stupid. Anywho, uh... They didn't really have any, there's not really any sort of development um, beyond, okay, so they buy up all these properties in this town, and the idea is, I guess, they're, like, selling them to people, and so they come in this house to try to, like, tear down a, they come in this house, and it just so happens that the la a lady lives there. Now... The lady, you know, looked to be in her, I mean, she looked probably in her, like, maybe 70s or whatever. Um, but the the idea, or at least the assumption, is that she was the mother of Leatherface. Now, if this is a direct remake, and they're going based off the timelines, and there's, that was 1974... Uh, you know, I'm no math major, but, like, that would put Leatherface... Let's say Leatherface was 20. And I don't know the origin story of, you know, how old Leatherface was when the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But let's just say he was 20 in 1974. That would put him at 68 today, if my math is correct. Is that right? All right? I'm no math major. Um, but, but let's just say that's correct. It's 68. Uh, that would put the mother, and who knows when the, the mother had the kid, but let's just say that would put her at, in her 80s. Let's, let's be generous, and let's say her 80s. 
Um, she looked pretty good for her 80s, um, considering that these people don't have access to health care, don't have access to, you know, they're not going to a doctor for anything. And, and also, let's circle back to that. Leatherface is 68 years old. He's not had a colonoscopy. He's not been in regular doctor visits. He, uh, you know, he's not taking any leave. You know, he's got the gout, a little couple back problems. You know, when you get when you get in your upper sixties, you know, uh, with with nothing, you know, he's not he's not running for the uh, the pill bottle. You know what I mean? I like in in, but yet he was pretty spry in this movie. And you're like, okay, well. Um, you know, what's he doing? What, like, what, what, you know, it's one thing when you're 20 years old, you could run around, chase people around with chainsaws running over your head. When you're 68, it's a little bit of a different story. So, because I like the, I like the hook of it. I like the hook that, you know, I mean, you could, the thing is, they could do that with every movie now. You could do this with every movie now. You can take, um, an older movie that had a final girl make her you know do it a few years from now and then that final girl you know has worked wasted her whole life trying to get back at the the person that person magically comes to life like you could take them you know if they didn't sorry i'm gonna spoil another i'm gonna spoil the friday the 13th movie if they didn't kill off the original girl for friday the 13th in the second one she could come back to life and but then again they could do a direct sequel and it wouldn't matter you could just erase all that from existence and I think the Halloween movies killed Jamie Lee Curtis a couple times. Uh, so yeah, you can just bring that back. Or at least one time. You can just bring that back if you want to. So, um, yeah. You can do that with damn near any movie at this point. Halloween has laid a blueprint of how you can handle this. And every movie could and should and you know probably will, considering there's no ideas in Hollywood anymore, do that. But in this one... Well, first of all, I didn't realize that the, the main girl had died. Um, that the, the lead actress uh, died a long time ago, actually, in the 90s. Um, so I, I was, like I said, I'm no, I'm no major Texas Chainsaw Massacre fan. I, I didn't see it till after I saw other movies um, that, that, you know, I appreciate its history. I appreciate what it brought to the horror genre. Um, but it definitely, you know, I wasn't like the... You know, I don't live and breathe Texas Chainsaw Massacre like some people do. Uh, but, so this character that plays the main girl um, really didn't have to, she didn't really look that hard. They're saying, there's a small little like one line throwaway, which is, you know, for this movie, all of them are one line throwaways. That's basically all the character development you get. Um, but that she's like, she looked her whole life looking for Leatherface, and she couldn't find him and whatever. And are we to believe that, because the movie implies it but doesn't really say, are we to believe that after the events of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, that he just, you know, he put his chainsaw down and became a mama's boy for 50 years, 40, 50 years? No, he didn't. There's no other incidents that occurred. Are we to believe that? I mean, the movie wants you to believe that. It doesn't directly smash it over your head. Uh, it doesn't, you know, hammer you down into the dirt and say, believe this. But it wants you to believe that she couldn't find him because nothing else ever occurred. At least at least not that it makes abundantly clear. And maybe I didn't, you know, maybe I glossed over that part. Um, but it's interesting because there's a post credit scene. And in the post credit scene, it shows Leatherface walking back to the, I guess, the original house. And I think if the houses, I don't know if the houses were meant to look similar or they were the same house, that the main girl actually moved into, or the, the, the final girl from the original, moved into the Texas Chainsaw Massacre house in an attempt that he would come back so she could confront him or kill him or whatever. And then in the post credit scene, you see Leatherface walking back to the house. I and mean, it looks like the same house, so maybe it is the same house. But anyway, 
if she couldn't find him for 40 plus years and he was able to walk back to that house, it wasn't that far. She never checked this little ghost town of all the towns you could possibly check. And what's interesting is, is that they said, oh, she became a ranger and, and she, you know, spent her whole life looking for this guy. Yet the police knew this lady that was his, her mother, knew her. They're like, oh, we told you to leave, you know, whatever your name is, you know, and, you, you know, whatever signed the deed. And, and that's how this torrid tale pops off is that these people bought up a ghost town. Uh, they were under the impression they bought up this lady's house. This lady is in her 80s. She has like a medical episode fighting with these people. And they put her in there and, you know, Leatherface comes down and puts her in the van and goes to the hospital, I guess. And of course, you know, as things were, she dies. And he loses his mind and, and, you know, he starts, you know, basically he starts killing people because that's what he does. And so uh, some of the kills are inventive, um, but the people are stupid. They never got a group of, no, don't get me wrong, I'm, you know, uh, these people not out of the realm of possibility that they wouldn't do dumb things. Um, but they, they make the, uh, the people in, uh, Halloween Kills look like, uh, rogue scholars. Um, they make them look like geniuses. These buzzos just basically come there to get killed for the most part. Uh, and they have opportunities. They have opportunities. Like, there's a scene where, like I said, he loses his mind. Uh, when his mom dies, he ends up, you know, killing all the police officers that are in the van with them. And then there's a girl. Like, why would... The, all right, first off. Why would the girl go to the hospital with these random strangers she just happened upon? She wouldn't. They had police officers for that. Um, it would have been fine. But anyway. <laughs> uh, they go to the hospital... Uh, or they go on their way to the hospital. She dies. He loses his mind. He starts killing police officers. He, he has some inventive kills in there. I'll give you that. But they crash into something in the middle of nowhere. And so Leatherface, several times, is under the impression that she has died. And so he keeps checking on her and that she died. And yet she keeps finding a way to squirm around and run away. And, you know, all the stuff she's trying to do. And I understand when you're in a situation, you're going to try to do that. But I mean, just like the bear, you know, play dead. Like, he would have left. He would have left her ass if she would have just lay there and played dead. Um, but he ended up cutting off the mother's face, and that was he, what he used for the face. And, you know, he, for somebody that's, you know, 68 years old, um, you know, he's, he's a bigger boy. He can... He can move around pretty good. Um, like I said, he walked back from the accident, um, which who knows how many miles down the road that was. Um, you know, I wouldn't say he got back. There's no time, so it's not like he got like oh he got back twenty minutes later, or an hour later, or three hours later, or five hours later. You know, you don't know how many miles he had to walk, but he's walking all over the place, and he's. You know, hiding, he's running, he's juking, he's coming out of nowhere, he's swinging things around. It's in good shape. Bigger boy, but good shape. But here's the other thing. So, you're... They're taking scenes from better movies and trying to make them, like... Like, there's a scene when they're, they're at the final confrontation that is, you know... And, and I get that it's an idea of, of stealing other people's... You're, they basically stole the plot of ha Reboot of Halloween and brought in the Texas, Texas Chainsaw Massacre world. So I understand that. But there's a, there's a one where they did a Terminator 2. Almost, you know, shot for shot Terminator 2, where 
you know, Leatherface is kind of like, you know, he's ready to attack this girl. And the one girl comes out with a shotgun. And she's like, boom, shoots him. You know, the rack rack, boom, shoots him again. And, you know, he's on the edge of like this falling down into, I don't even know what, it's like a, it's just like a hole, like a, not like a giant hole, but like, you know, maybe like a 10 foot hole or whatever filled with water. And then she did like the, you know, th click. And, you know, he might as well have like put his head down and did the old T-1000 and just went like, no, no, no. You know, like it was, it was almost like shot for shot that. But they've stealing ideas from all these people and just executed them poorly. Just poor execution on their part. Um, but the other thing is that while they could have made something that said the final girl confrontation with Leatherface and, you know, she's going to be the one to put him down or she's going to fight, you know, uh, not much of a confrontation for a girl that her whole life was surrounded about trying to kill Leatherface, uh, 40, almost 50 years attempting to find him, kill him. Her plan wasn't entirely well thought out. She won a Leatherface who who hardly talks or I don't, I don't know if he's ever talked in the franchise from I mean, maybe he has for what I remember uh, was to like you remember these people you remember their names and of course he either can't talk or he doesn't remember them at all because it's been fifty years you know he you know it's not one of those things where it's like. You know, in the normal sense, if you went on a killing spree in you know, when you were twenty, you would remember some people. But this is Leatherface. He's lived in a, you know, inbred sort of situation for fifty plus years. He may not, you know, it may be to him that it was like fixing uh, something around the house. Like he didn't, he didn't even think about it another day. Where she thought about it for fifty years. So that's an interesting little beat there. But the confrontation wasn't much. He basically killed her almost instantly <laughs> after all this, after this whole hook of like, you know, they're going to, she's going to find him and they're going to have this big battle. Now she did do the, you know, hero's last dying thing where she, you know, shot him a couple times, didn't do anything, of course. And, you know, then she's dead. Uh, but yeah, it was, a, it was kind of a waste of a, um, I mean, of you know, you're putting together an 80 minute movie. It's not good. It's not good. Um, it's never going to be good. Horror movies don't have to be, you know, the thing I'm picking on it for, uh, horror movies don't have to be great in terms of character development or whatever. But this one just didn't hit. It, it Like, for example, uh, I was not a, uh, I was not a giant fan of the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but I am a giant fan of the reboot of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The reboot of the Texas, Texas Chainsaw Massacre did what this movie couldn't do. It was gory, but it had, uh, there was a little bit of more, there wasn't any major plot development for these people, but you cared about them more. These people... You know, by the time they got to the big, um, you know, kill at the end, I guess you could say, I didn't care at all. And, and it, it, like, it didn't make any impact because this person had no development in any way, shape, or form. I didn't even know their name. So the hook being is, and, and you know, I've spoiled certain parts, but, like, you know, and, and I'm not going to say, like, uh, but two people got out and they're leaving the town you know they're sitting in the car relaxing pretending that they you know hit the guy the indestructible guy on the head with a chainsaw and not even like the like the top of the chainsaw not even with like the blade or anything and like he's dead we're fine and they have a self-driving car which you know even more so and so the self-driving car uh, they're relaxing in there, you know, everything's fine. And then, of course, the car starts going, like, two miles an hour. And, you know, Leatherface comes out, 
grabs the one person out of the car, cuts their head off immediately. And they did the same hook where, like, when the girl was in the truck and she was driving down the road, you know, from the original. Uh, or was driving down the road and she was in the back. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's the same beats. But, like, in this case, you're in the sunroof of a self-driving car. Like, it's just, nah. Like, everything about it's really stupid. It's an unnecessary film. Like, it doesn't bring anything new to the table. Um, you're stealing the plot points of, of better movies. You're stealing better ideas um, from other franchises and hoping to bring it to your own. But it's just lazy. It's uninspired. The character development's awful. And like I said, they had some cool kills. Um, there was the one uh, thing with the bus where, you know, he got on a party bus with all these, like, Instagram dudes and, and just, you know, went on a frenzy. Um, but, you know, and there were some interesting things in there. Like I said, different inventive kills. But beyond that, it was unnecessary. Like, it did not... It shouldn't exist. <laughs> There's no reason for it to exist. Um, I give it two out of five stars. Uh... You know, it's if you really want Jones in for a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie, go watch the 2003 reboot. It's a lot better, um, and it's a little bit longer. You know, it's almost like an actual movie versus this like, hey, what if Leatherface killed all these like influencer people? That that's really the hook. And what if we we did like a Halloween where we got like the original girl to come back and like, try to confront him. Um, but none of those ideas are ever fleshed out. They're half-baked ideas, and none of them ever end up making anything um, good. Like, it never ends up becoming, like, a good movie. It's just a bad, bad Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. Um, the one thing that they do that I'll give them credit for is they keep bringing back, and or unless they pulled that from a previous movie, John Larroquette. John Larroquette uh, did the voiceover for i believe the original texas chainsaw massacre uh movie trailer i think and um they've had him back for the reboot and now they have him back for the 2022 reboot i always like john larkett i you know he's a great voice great actor um they're gonna bring him back to do all the narration i'm here for it uh so <laughs> because that's how every texas chainsaw mo massacre movie has to start now they have to have, almost have like a documentary of Leatherface and what he did and whatever to make it real um you know that brings it real into the movie um but they and they've explored it in different ways and this one it was like a murder show basically oh but yeah it's an unnecessary remake uh you know unnecessary sequel I guess to a yeah it, it's not it's just the point being is is that this is gonna happen again it's going to happen again. It's going to happen, you know, um, they're going to start bringing out all the hits, you know, like I said, Friday the 13th, my guess is would be one that would be, um, you know, you, you, you could easily do a Nightmare on Elm Street, but they kind of did a Nightmare on Elm Street one. Um, they did it with, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street 3. They did it with New Nightmare, kind of, because it was, you know, in set in real life. But they could easily do a Nightmare on Elm Street one with with Nancy um, coming back. And, you know, she's older now. You know, just remove the, the other movies from the thing and just make it a direct sequel. You could easily do that. You could do it with Friday the 13th. You could do it with anything let me know your thoughts on the reboot re, re reboot sequel sequel reboot reboot sequel whatever you want to call it of the texas chainsaw massacre did you like it did you not like it it's funny the first two reviews i saw was like the new texas chainsaw massacre is awesome and then everything i saw since was this is the worst most stupid movie to ever exist like what is the purpose of this and i'm kind of in the i'm not saying i'm in the middle it's stupid uh it shouldn't exist but it's you know it held my interest i guess you know it was it was there it was everything you want in a texas chainsaw massacre movie it's pointless characters you know um it's the geico commercial of characters 
Like, why don't we get in the moving car? Are you crazy? Let's hide behind those chainsaws. You know, like, that's, that's really what it is. That is what it is. These people have transportation. And they can go whenever they want. And, you know, there's some loose plot point where, like, the one guy takes all the keys for some reason because he's, like, he's bothered that they kicked the old lady out of the house so he, like, takes the keys to one of the buses. But, like, they could they could have got out if they wanted to. If they wanted to, they could have got out. And, and uh, the plot didn't demand that. It demanded they all be slaughtered. And that's fine. That's what you're looking for. Um, but that'll do it. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you're new here, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. If you'd like to support me on Patreon like John Bailey did, you can do so. Link is in the description below. If you'd like to buy a t-shirt, a Tom Was Here t-shirt, you can do so at Spreadshirt, as well as links to my eBay store, Facebook page, Instagram, Clubhouse, and the Pennsylvania Autograph Collectors Association. Links are in the description below. But let me know your thoughts. I would love your input on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, but guys, thank you so much for watching. And until the next video, I will see you soon. But until then, bye everyone.